Sometimes, in our instant oatmeal, workaholic, concrete jungle society, you need to change a pace, something to slow you down and even you out. Sometimes, when even a family show might feature a beheading, it might be best to mellow out with something a bit more down-to-earth, a bit old-fashioned, professional even, something just a bit more modest. Maybe something a bit like Foil's War. Ah, look at this lady here, going for a ride, how delightful. See, isn't this peaceful? Isn't this pleasant and relaxing? Wait, what the hell? Who is that? Well, there's a wire. Well, surely she'll see it. Wait. I don't think she sees it. Uh-oh. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, I can't look. Yo, does Foil's War suck? No, it's uh, pretty great. All in all, Foil's War has a lot going for it. It's a whodunit, for those of you who like police mysteries and very detail-oriented shows. Though, it's probably not the kind of show that provides you with all the clues straight up if you need that in your mystery show. It's a period piece for those of you who like history, particularly World War II history. It's British for you more sophisticated and less brash folks. It's pretty tame compared to most other shows involving murder. I mean, you could watch this with most members of your family without feeling odd. Uh, sorry to all you gorehounds out there. And it showcases a unique setting in that the main character is trying to maintain order during wartime, a setting that I really haven't been exposed to before. It's a very enjoyable show, and at the center of what makes Foil's War so good is something that should really be at the core of every show, well-defined and superbly written characters. And not just the main characters, but the side characters, and the episodic characters. Some characters you might only spend 10 minutes with, but you'll fully understand their motivations and see a certain human authenticity to their being. And by this I mean they make mistakes, they're moody, they have sympathy and changes of heart, they're uninformed or opinionated, they have biases and irrational thoughts, they have strengths and weaknesses and are sometimes corrupt. But most of all, they grow and change. Detective Foyle is a great and simple example of this. I mean, when he meets his driver Sam for the first time, you may be able to determine what he thinks about his new employee just from his face. Oh. And if that's not clear enough, Maybe this is. You don't ask me what I'm doing. You don't ask me what I'm investigating. You simply take me to where I want to go. Is that understood? But after she helps him with the case, he says... Sam? Yes, sir. Thank you. It's a very subtle gesture that says a lot about his character. Does he get mad and stubbornly say she should have stayed out of it? No. Does he immediately begin to trust her and let her shadow him in his work? Also no. In fact, in one of the next scenes, we see this. Can I come in? No. Maybe you're getting the sense that Foil is someone professional and respectful, but with a certain method that he doesn't want to interrupt. You know, you could also get the sense that this is the start of a potential friendship. You know, maybe it could all work out. Every brief view into their world introduces some new character with their own perspective, however justified, about war, humanity, profit-making, or... Maybe it's even simpler and they're just trying to do their bit to get by or help out. The magic is that in each subsequent visit, you'll notice how that perspective has made one of the recurring characters more mature, more resolute, and overall moved to a more advanced stage than they were before. I'm also a big fan of how many of the changes are incremental and aren't beaten into the viewer's head. For instance, you have a non-detective and non-civilian character like Sam, who, after hanging around detectives for long enough, begins to pick up their mannerisms, techniques, and even their cause while still remaining herself. But wait a second, we need to rewind. Because it's very important that we touch on the World War II setting that is the key motivator for character changes and discoveries. There's an old saying that you never really know a man till you hold him over a volcano by his ankles. Or wait, is that a thing? I don't know. Look, the point is that the situation surrounding a person heavily facilitates how much you learn about them and how much of their actual personality you see. This concept is brought up in Foil's War very consistently as the wartime setting produces a large gray area to view crimes under. It was a time where penalties were escalated and personnel were hard to come by. You might get hung for stealing any resource deemed vital to the war effort, or in turn for being a specific nationality or simply being in the wrong place at the wrong time. It was a time of military rule, where a large percentage of the world was getting taught how to kill. So naturally, multiple forms of the question, what do you do with the criminal who is important to the war effort, come up a lot. These questions can be very difficult to answer, and the final decisions made by the characters will make you intimately aware of their inner workings. You may find that a character who seems to believe in the letter of the law has a soft spot for certain situations, 
and you may even find yourself siding more with a murderer than you might expect. Of course, Fool's War has its faults. You know, the show can move very briskly through scenes when first introducing characters, and if you aren't good with names and faces and aren't following along, you can get confused as to who is who. They aren't going to pause on every character's face with a big title card with the name, so pay attention. Also, some parts can be very slow and methodical as you watch the detective build this case. Entire scenes may be dedicated to asking and answering a yes or no question that isn't the most interesting watch if you don't understand its importance to the case yet. Do you uh, cure your own meat at the hotel? What's that got to do with anything? You know, of course, the big reveal will straighten everything out in the end. And lastly, some characters seem to give in very easily with confessions after the detectives crack the case. But I feel like I can make a concession to this, as it would significantly pad the length to already long and complicated storylines that are generally very well done. I just think that what they have is enough, and I don't necessarily think that having the police satisfy some burden of proof or diving deep into the court system is necessary to elevate the show beyond where it already is. Quite simply, a show that you should watch.